Okay, so now let's look at the second strategy to optimize the use of the IP address space uh, that is uh, classless interdomain routing. So this is again a classless um, approach for IP address assignment. So as a motivation for this, now let's say you want to support a network that requires uh, about say 300 hosts. Okay, so uh, slightly more than 255 hosts. So uh, we don't have like two, three departments like we did for subnetting. We just have one network that needs support for more than um, 254 hosts, let's say like that. Right, so whatever you could support class C, uh, it's more than that. So then if you go again with the class based addressing, you will go for a class B address space, right? Say for 300 hosts, you would need a class B address space. Again, the, IP, uh, the efficiency of such an assignment would be very low because uh, with class B address space, we can support up to 64K addresses, whereas we need only 300 unique IP addresses. So the idea here is to use, uh, again, uh, um, multiple class C address spaces. Okay, So class C address spaces are more in plenty because you have up to 24 bits for the network part, right? So they are more in plenty, so we're going to make use of them. So, what we are going to do is, uh, let's see, uh, let's go through the problem to understand how it works. So, let's say we want to support a network of uh, 700 hosts. Okay, so, uh, we know that we cannot do this with, do this with one class C uh, network address space, uh, which can support only up to 254 hosts. So, we need at least uh, three class C address spaces, right? So. I choose 212.45.16.17.0.18.0. So one thing that you should notice here is I chose them to be very contiguous class C address spaces, which means 16.0, 17.0, and 18.0, something which I can later show that I can aggregate together as one single network address for the outside world. Okay. All right. So let's do that. So when I write this in binary in uh, 212.45.16.0, so this is my 16.0, okay? So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. And then 212.45.17.0, this is 18.0, okay? So uh, now let's try to get the common bits in these three. So 212.45 is of course common. So uh, these are the six common bits in this, right? Up to the one I have. Uh, boxed in so zero 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 one zero zero so these are the six common bits along with this uh, eight plus eight sixteen common bits so there are 22 common bits totally right and then these eight bits as well as these two bits are not common uh, like once uh, this is common though but once the common part uh, ends here right from left to right the common part ends and uh, they start becoming uh, different here so we'll say these are the 22 common bits let's keep it like that okay so 22 common bits so what we are going to do is we are going to use these 22 bits for the network part and the remaining 32 minus 22 which is 10 bits for the host part okay so I'm going to say 212.45 dot this 0.0.0.1.0.0, so the common part, right? I said these are the 22 bits I'm going to use for the network part. So the remaining 10 bits will all be zeros for the host part if I want to indicate uh, the network address or network prefix. So what I do is I put a slash 22, the subnet mask, to indicate that the, the first 22 bits represent the network part. We know from a strict class-based addressing, we don't have 22 bits for the network part for either class A, B, or C, right? So that's why this is classless. Uh, something other than 8, 16, and 24 bits for the network part is used here. So we use 22 bits for the network part, okay? So the first 22 bits that are common across these three class C address spaces are used for the network part. So that's what I indicate here. Okay, so 212.45 dot up to this point is common, and then you have this 10 bits for the host part. So this is 16, right? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and then you have all the 10 bits 0. So again, these two zeros. So put together these 8 bits, <coughs> these 8 bits evaluate to 
zero 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 uh, zero one zero zero zero. So these eight bits are evaluated to sixteen, and then you have to twelve dot forty five dot zero slash twenty two. Okay. So now let's come up with the broadcast IP address, which should be very easy now, right? Because these ten ten bits, if they are all zeros, that's the network address. If they are all ones, that is the broadcast IP address. So that will be. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, that's the common 22 bit part and then you have the two ones followed by another eight ones so totally you have 10 ones okay so these 10 ones identify the host part so so now this one one these two go with the these six bits so when you put these together the two together it is this in binary is one plus two is three plus uh, what is this 16 uh, so that is 19 right so 19.255 again slash 22 to indicate that the first 22 bits are for the network part okay so it's our broadcast ip address and the subnet mask is what 22 ones followed by 10 zeros so 22 ones we have eight ones eight ones and 16 ones so remaining six ones are here and then the two zeros so six ones plus two zeros is eight bits the last eight bits so you have 252 dot zero all right so uh this 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 is 252 because if all ones is 255 you don't have ones for one and two so that is three so 255 minus three is 252 all right so that's your subnet mask now and then the range of valid ip addresses is everything in between means uh 212.45.16.1 slash 22 dot two dot slash twenty two dot three and so on then seventeen dot zero even that seventeen dot zero is a valid unicast IP address. Similarly eighteen dot zero is also a valid unicast IP address. Nineteen dot zero is valid one. Even seventeen dot two fifty five is a valid one. Eighteen dot two fifty five sixteen dot two fifty five everything is valid unicast IP addresses. The only thing uh, that you cannot use as a unicast IP address is sixteen dot zero and nineteen dot two fifty five. Okay, so everything from 16.1 slash 22 to 19.254 slash 22 is going to be your valid range of IP addresses. So the number of IP addresses you have here is going to be 16.12. You can go from 16.12, 16.255. So that's going to be to 255 addresses. Then 17.0 to 17.255. Eighteen dot zero to eighteen dot two fifty five. That's going to be two fifty six. Nineteen dot zero to nineteen dot two fifty four. That's going to be two fifty five. So the total is going to be what? Uh, if you add them up, this is going to be one zero two two. Okay. So if you look at the problem statement now, I wanted to support only seven hundred holes. Uh, thinking that these three class C address spaces will be sufficient because each can support 254 or 255 around that. So we thought this would be sufficient. But you see that you cannot really uh, uh, restrict to just these three class C address spaces. You would have to really kind of use the 19.0 class C address space too in order to support this network. Okay. So you have to use those four class C address spaces. So which means the efficiency of assignment is you really wanted 700 hosts, but if you go according to the principles of uh, this uh, CIDR, which is classless internet domain routing, then you would have to purchase um, those four class C address spaces and with an uh, efficiency of assignment to be 700 over 1022, that is like 68% of efficiency. Okay. Um, now, if you notice, from where we purchase the IP addresses, there is an organization called IANA, Internet Assigned Number Authority. I think it's based in Florida. So uh, the ISPs, uh, when they want um, to support all their uh, customers, they have to purchase the IP addresses from them, right? So each organization have to, uh, they can get it from the ISP or can directly get from IANA. So if you need any address space, um, then you have to purchase it from them. Okay.